Hello everyone and welcome to another headbanging episode. We will be talking about how to shoot concerts and live performances, what challenges does this task possess and what are advantages apart from having to see a concert for free. So I present to you me who shot the last two seasons of Formula One after race concerts in Abu Dhabi which includes such names as Foo Fighters, Def Leppard, Tiesto, uh, Swedish House Mafia, Shania Twain, Chris Brown, Kendrick Lamar and others. And uh, was it easy? No. Why? Because shooting live performances is always a mess. There is so much organization that gets into it that there is no organization at all sometimes it feels. They organizing such big events often comes as a challenge to the organizers as well because they forget to issue you a pass they forget that you need a parking they forget to talk to the band management to see if actually they want any pictures to be captured at all the usual nonsense has started i managed to find one person with the car but he's uh, run away looking for pass and for other members of uh, our team who are not here i don't know where they are so yeah let's see how it goes this event is always a uh, mayhem but we will persevere in the end no worries the first thing that i have to talk about with the live performances challenges is that there is a lack of lights sometimes there is no light at all so live venues or stadiums they are the places which are only artificially lit and you might think yeah but the lighting guys they know what they're doing not always not always sometimes the lighting guys just put the lighting on auto and you just have to deal with it you have to catch the moments you have to be patient you have to wait for the moment and you have to be in the right place at the right time to capture the best live performance picture of your life. So your first task is to shoot the opening act and the opening act uh, does not usually come with a good lighting assistant and the lighting guys are either playing something on random or on auto and the light is not synchronized with what this DJ or the band is doing at all unless they bring their own lighting guy and he's like doing some kind of like a good job be very patient and wait for the moments when the light and the musician is aligned to capture your nice images secondly technical details so first of all I really really recommend that you shoot everything in RAW because you cannot set your white balance the light is either yellow blue pink super blue like some random light from whichever direction and or sometimes a mix of lights so you cannot really set the color temperature and rely on it unless it's a performance of maybe some orchestra and then the light is consistent then sure you can set up your white balance and uh, just forget about it so usually the performer is quite well lit and the stage is either dark or something is going on there with, I don't know, backlit panel or background video or something like this. The camera will have a really hard time trying to figure out what is the correct exposure for it. So it's either you put the spot exposure metering, which does not always work because then your subject has to be always like in the spot in the center and uh, it might not be the case. So in this case, especially if the lights are going up and down, up and down, it's bright, it's too dark or whatever, it's best to set your ISO to auto because you will be just tired trying to switch the dial between like no light, too much light, no light, too much light. And I usually set my ISO to auto unless it's like very well lit because sometimes you're lucky and it's like consistently well lit then you can set your ISO to like 400 but if you put your ISO to auto I recommend that you put your exposure compensation to a little bit lower than the middle so from zero you either go to like one third two thirds or even minus one just to be safe because you can always pull the shadows but the highlights if they're blown they're blown like you can't do anything with, with that the next point the people on the stage are moving fast and if it's a pop singer he will be dancing and he will be jumping and there is also probably some other dancers with them who are gonna be 
doing a very fast movements and like the whole thing is gonna go left and right. There is a few points to think about this. So first of all, your shutter speed has to be quite short to capture them and freeze them in the motions because you don't want any missing limbs or blurry pictures just because they were moving too fast. So think about of 1 125 of a second or 250 or sometimes even 500. 1 500 of a second because they are moving quick and you have to freeze them. They're going left and right, back and front. You probably will have to put your camera into servo because if you just focus on them being here and they move a little bit back when you press the shutter, it's not going to be in focus. So they have to the camera has to track people moving left and right. And number three is you probably will have to shoot in burst mode because you need to capture as many images as possible. As a general rule, big performers only allow you to shoot the first three songs. If you're lucky, you have first three songs from the beat, which is the front of the stage and then you can shoot from the crowd but sometimes three songs is all you get and then security is gonna be on your back and you cannot shoot anything else if you didn't capture what you need to capture alas like forget about it so if you're there in the pit for your first three songs you have to focus on getting close-ups because this is the closest that you will get to this performer but the problem with being in the pit is that the uh, performer is here and you're here and you're shooting up here so you're shooting up their chin so you have to back up as much as possible and if there is some place to lift yourself up like try to use this opportunity or you go a little bit on the side of the stage and then it will look more organic shooting them from there but uh, like this you might be getting some unwanted equipment or some random background so you just have to judge and, and see like this time goes very quickly the three songs is usually like 10 minutes max and that's all you get while you're there uh, so you try to shoot your close-up and turn around as well and shoot some crowd because this is your opportunity to get a big crowd shot they're all there but just remember that you were just shooting something super bright and super like well lit and now you're turning around and uh, the crowd is probably not well lit at all so you have to adjust your settings for that. So once your time is up in the pit you will be either kicked out to shoot from the crowd or you will just have to pack up your camera and like, enjoy the concert from now on. So if you get a chance to shoot from the crowd or if the, this is the only opportunity that you have so then you can do a few things. You can go all the way to the back of the crowd and shoot like the whole atmosphere of the stage uh, with the performer and all the people enjoying. Just wait for the time when they put some light on the crowd so like it's nicely lit and illuminated. When you're also over there, you have a chance to shoot this like very dramatic shots if the lighting from the stage hits your camera and there's all these flares and like it looks very dramatic. Then another thing is shooting images from the crowd gives you an opportunity to add a little bit of depth in your photos so there is like a front kind of element and the problem with shooting from the crowd depends on the concert sometimes people are friendly but mostly they are drunk and they are excited and they don't want to give you their spot and they don't want the photographer to be anywhere in this space because he's disturbing them and he's uh, ruining the experience of watching the concert you know, nowadays some people it seems like they don't go to watch a concert, they just go to film it on their phone so you have to fight with all this like hands and uh, as soon as you find like a spot to shoot your pictures there's always a hand that comes up or somebody's ass because somebody's trying to get on somebody's shoulders. So it's a challenge, it's not easy and then you also have to wait for the performer to look good and nothing to obstruct your view, so, but hopefully you will have enough time to shoot a bunch of those. So you also have to ask the person who hired you to shoot what are they expecting from the images, do they need a lot of crowd images and of course don't forget to shoot all the fans because you know they also add to the atmosphere of the concert. But sometimes you will have to shoot all the merchandise, all the venue, all the branding, all the food trucks, all the alcohol brands and whatnot. So if you have to shoot that, make sure to arrive early that, so that you have enough time to shoot clean shots and then uh, those shots of people trying to sell something to the people who came to the concert. So talking about gear, gear is quite important for events like this. 
and um, as much as I always say that uh, gear doesn't matter, like for this kind of events, gear matters because you need to have full frame to get the least noise. You have to have quite expensive lenses, at least f2.8, but if you have 1.8 or 1.2, if you're that lucky guy, good for you. But those lenses sometimes are not so easy to focus. So in terms of focal lengths, I would say if you have 2470 and 7200, then you are very, very much covered. But uh, it's a good idea also to have a wide angle and maybe a fisheye because it's fun to, f to shoot all the fans with a fisheye. Like and if you get very close to the performers and you get to capture like the emotions very close up, it's, it can be fun. So of course, when you're trying to record the video, there is some delivery guys who are coming and they want something from you. But I was saying that it's important to wear hearing protection because hearing protection can save your ears. Because in one of the concerts that I was where Chris Brown was a performer, we were standing in the pit and there was like just this rows of loudspeakers. And uh, when the concert started, there was just a wave of sound that came over us and thankfully I had my hearing protection but the other guys didn't and they said that the whole 24 hours later the ears were ringing and generally if you feel like you know the sound is okay still better to wear hearing protection because you might not notice how gradually the sound increases and then by the end of the night your ears are ringing I wish you all that the light is perfect that you are in the perfect place that nothing went wrong, your camera focused on every shot, you got to see the best performance of your life, you got to pay the ton of money, you got to hang out with the musicians and everything was just perfect and the organizers are gonna call you for the next one and the next one and the next one as well. But until then, stay safe and I see you soon and keep on rocking! I got to stand next to DJ Tiesto on the stage, like literally a meter away from him. That was so special, honestly, thinking that, you know, in 2009 I took a train to go to Kiev to see him and uh, I stayed at the party until 6 a.m. I mean, I was young and I really enjoyed it. And his concert yesterday was amazing as well, like the fire, the sparkly things, the flying things, the music, the lighting effects, the energy. Even if you don't like this kind of music, it was kind of impossible not to uh, jump to it. So yeah, today is day number two. We have uh, Chris Brown playing and some DJ, I think, called Tak or Tik or something like this. And um, yeah, so let's see. I don't have a, a permit as always, but it's okay. So yeah. It's beautiful also, dirty windows. <laughs>